So today we're going to build an auto tile that has built-in slants or inclines. That way you don't have to manually put every single incline in. So the first thing you'll need is a tile map. And in the tile set, I only have one tile set right now, which means it is tile set zero, which is important uh, if you will have to write an extra couple lines of code if it is not tile set zero. And I set up the bit mask, that way the auto tile works. There are many videos on how to do that, both on my channel and on YouTube. But the main thing is, is make sure your auto tile is working before you try to add the slants into it. Then once you get that completed, we will add a script to the tile map that we are working on. So in the script, we will have a tool that extends the tile map. And this export boolean is just a toggle, so you can turn this tool on and off in the editor. That way, in case you don't want to use it, you can always toggle it off. Now, the incline tile, how you find that is you go to your tile set and you find your tile. And the tile that I will be using for my slant is actually 0, 014, way down here. If you count from the top corner, remember to start at 0, 0. And you count 0 down to, this would be tile 0, 014. This is 1, 14. Yours will probably be different. Now this set cell is actually a built-in function that we are going to override. When you look at the set cell in the docs, it has this little excerpt here that shows how you override the function. There's a typo in it. The flip X, flip Y, transpose, and the auto tile chord have to have the defaults. So the equals false, equals false, equals false, and the equals vector two. And so what that looks like in code, is make sure that you have all of those typed in, otherwise it will give you an error. And every time that we set a tile, we're going to check to see if the slant tool is on. We're going to check to see if the cell above the one we are changing is empty or not. And the reason why is you're never going to want the slant tile if there's a tile above it because you're going to want it to connect to that tile. Then if we pass that check, we're going to use a bitwise operator. And what this means here is we're going to check the cell to, to the left and we're going to check the cell to the right and we're going to see if that equals one. And these plus ones, if you remember, the get cell is going to return either negative one, which is empty, or it will return the tile number or the tile ID. So if you remember, I only had one type of tile in my tile set, so it was tile set zero. But if it returns a negative one, I can't use a bitwise operator on it because you can only use that uh, to check zeros and ones. So I'm going to add one. So if it is empty, it will equal zero. And if it is the, and if it is my zero tile, I'll add one to it and it will be one. But this bitwise operator, it's a bitwise XOR or exclusive OR. And all that means is if both of them are zero, you get zero. If one, if one or the other is one, it will return one. But if both of them are one, it will return zero. Now that sounds confusing, but as far as the tile map goes, but what we're checking is, so this one does not have one to the left, so that'd be zero, and it does not have one to the right, so that is also zero. Thinking about this middle tile again, there is one to the left and there is one to the right, so we don't want the middle tile to be a slant. But in cases like this, if we look to the side one, there is not one to the left and there is one to the right and vice versa for this one on the side. So we're only going to have a slant if there's a tile on only one side, which is exactly what the exclusive or the XOR bitwise operator does. Now, if you remember, my tile set was tile set zero. And if you have a different number of tile set, you're going to have to figure out a way to reroute this number that it returns to be a one or a zero. So what I would suggest doing is doing like remainder two. And what that would do is if it's zero, it will be zero. But if it's any number higher than one, it will actually do the remainder. So it divides it by two and gives you the remainder. So this 
is what the line of code would be for anybody that has a tile set ID number that's higher than zero. Now after you figure that out, we're going to change the auto tile coordinate that we get to the one that we found in our tile set, which I showed earlier to be 014. And it has to be flipped sometimes, but it was very glitchy when I messed with the flip X. I tried a lot of different things, but it just made the auto tile not work the way it was supposed to. So instead of flipping it, I just decided to go into the tile set and find the opposite side. So this side, which is one over. So you'll have to figure out how to reroute it to the correct tile if it needs to flip. So what mine is, is it just checks the cell to the left. And if there is a cell to the left, because this is the one that connects to the left, it changes the X coordinate to be one opposed to zero, which shifts it to the right. If you have if they're not in the same place and you can't just shift it, I just recommend making another incline tile variable and just switching the coordinate to that variable. And then at the end here, this dot set cell, that just runs all of the rest of the code that typically would have been run in this function or before we did the override. So what you end up with is a nifty little tool that allows you to do all different types of inclines quickly.